Today, we we'll discuss about the creep properties of the rock mass. Creep is deformation over time under normal static load condition. Here in this diagram, you can see a normal theoretical creep behavior. Initially, it somewhat, somewhat acts like normal elastoplastic material that is that is somewhat somewhat settling out and redistributing the stresses thereafter you find somewhat plastic region the middle region i'm talking about that is steady state creep there with time the deformation increases linearly and lately you find the accelerating creep in case of rock mass suppose there the mass is sufficiently fractured then it just somewhat loses out with uh, with time under the same load condition that is accelerating creep just below the same diagram you see another curve that is somewhat converging to a point when there is no deformation with time that is a situation where no creep is occurring now here we have a question for you to reflect upon. We just learned what is creep. It is basically the deformation over time. Now you think in what kind of rock mass you expect to observe this creep phenomenon more, more prominently. Take your time, pause the video if necessary and point out the conditions that you think are favorable for the creep. Now many of you must have got this that if the rock mass is sufficiently fractured with so many discontinuities and subjected to high stress or the material itself is soft somewhat like shell under high watery condition. The early work in the creep phenomenon of the rock mass were related to study of the time dependent shear strength of the rock, the study of post failure behaviors of the gof, and related to, related to the earthquake sciences. And subsequently, with time, the rock scientists started to study for the creep behavior in the intact rocks and we found creep is not actually that much that much prominent in the intact rock masses rather the fractured one with discontinuities and especially the discontinuities filled with clay materials show the creep phenomenon more prominently here in this diagram, we have a theoretical shear stress versus shear deformation plot and a plot of the theoretical creep that is capable of causing the same deformation under lower load conditions. That is how long run strength of a rock mass that is creep strength is much lower than the short time dynamic strength of a rock mass. This is the inference that we got to grasp here. Now, with some physical understanding of creep and with some understanding that why understanding creep behavior is important for rock engineers, let us see how rock scientists model the creep behavior. The creep behavior is basically a function of time. It is deformation as function of time. The first part or the first phase of the creep model is a logarithmic function which rises with a decreasing slope and the next part that is phase 2 
is basically a linear function and the last and the last phase is a polynomial in some of the textbooks you will also find this mathematical model is represented as differential of time equals to some constant multiplied by t to the power n where for n equals to 0 it is the linear function for n equals to minus 1 it is logarithm equal and for n greater than 1 it is the exponential portion it is basically the same equation expressed in a different way now this was about expressing this mathematically in the coming slide you will see how rheologically we model this creep function rheological model means when we try to model a complex system as a simplified system and then we derive expression for this simplified one here the diagram in the slide is Bruges, is Bruges rheological model which is often pronounced as Burger's rheological model this model is basically the combination of springs and the dampers now let's have a brief introduction of Maxwell and Kelvin Bloch material first as you can see in the diagram the Maxwell model is basically a spring and a damper connected in series there are a group of Maxwell materials that follow these kind of rheological phenomena for example you can consider a dough of wheat as in close example of Maxwell material next the representative model of Kelvin materials are basically a spring and a damper that are connected parallel a good example of Kelvin's material can be seen as a somewhat like a sponge a sponge that has some viscous nature when you compress it it feels like somewhat plastic but when you leave it it restores back in its in its old position next combining these two models Bruges proposed his model and this model found to be capturing the pre phenomenon more accurately another point I would like to add in this slide that all of you might have guessed it correctly that this Maxwell is the same person who proposed the Maxwell equation and the, this Kelvin in this second model is the same Lord Kelvin on whose name we have this Kelvin scale of temperature After you have some understanding of mathematical and rheological representation of the creep model, I expect you to understand that you see this curve as linear combination of three curves. That is a linear function that is somewhat like Maxwell materials, a logarithmic function that is somewhat close to Kelvin's material and the exponential function that is somewhat related to a highly fragmented rock mass or you can very closely see it as a uh, as a heave of a sand these three properties joining together gives rise to this creep phenomenon now after we gone through these concepts now I want you to think upon what are the factors that you think can influence the creep behavior this time I expect you to be more technical and insightful about discuss discussing these points than what we had in the first reflection point you can pause the video and take your time and note down the points that come in your mind
these are some of the point and there are many more which I'm sure that many of you might have listed listed out and I expect you would share your list in our Google group so first we have the stress conditions conditions the more confinement or the hydrostatic pressure we have on the rock mass the less tube behavior we actually witness in it and the more deviatonic stresses we have in it the more prominent will be the creep phenomenon and in case of slopes if the normal pressure is high we will see less creep and if the shear stress is high we will see more deformation and another important thing is obviously the material properties imagine it's a very hard material without any filling material and all in in such case we won't see much of creep behavior and imagine it is a clay clay material then we would certainly see much of much of creep things going out there and joint roughness that also plays a role because where once the joints are crushed it significantly loses its strength and water condition it increases your pore pressure more water also increases fluidity of your filling materials therefore it will certainly show more creep behavior under high water condition Now here are few key points that we always keep in our mind about the rock creep that the major rock creep phenomena that we see are due to the movement along the rock fractures and joints secondly it is less likely that we see material level creep in the rock masses under normal temperature next more filling material in my discontinuities means more creep phenomenon we shall be able to witness and the deviatonic stress in the rock mass plays a very important role in displaying the creep behavior shortly i would upload the assignments related to this meanwhile i expect that uh, we will probably get some classes some physical classes where we shall be uh, rightly discuss about this and clarify your doubts and all otherwise you always have the option of using that at google forum ask your questions there maybe throughout the discussions we will get to clarify other doubts and related things so thank you very much